Hi, this is Frankie from About Script, and in this video we're going to kind of uh, show the process of creating a website. So, um, if you don't know, what I do for my day job, I don't think I've ever said it before, is I'm a web developer. I do a lot of freelance web design and development. More on the development, like, like here are your ideas, I'm going to make them happen for you kind of uh, thing. So I'm not definitely the best designer. I'm not not the Leonardo da Vinci of web design or anything like that. Um, so first thing you'll need is some way to write your code. I highly recommend an IDE, um, Integrated Development Environment, over just like a simple text editor like Notepad. For a while I just exclusively used Vim, which is kind of silly to use for such a big project as a website. It works great for small things, but I digress. Um, so your best option, in my opinion, uh, is by far WebStorm. The problem is you only get a 30-day free trial, and after that there's some pricing. You can get around that if you have an open source project you're working on, um, but I, I just have the free trial going right now. Uh, your second best option would probably either be NetBeans or Eclipse. I would say that uh, Eclipse is probably a little bit better for this, just from what I know, but they both do a pretty good job. So we're going to get rid of those. Next thing you'll need is an idea for your website. Now, a lot of times this will be something like that you really want to do in particular, but um, when you're just starting out, it's usually good to just pick something completely random that you don't care about too much. So I just went through this and uh, I did it earlier, but I came back to it and I decided that I'm creating a site called Skate Colony because earlier skateboard came up and I saw the word colony somewhere in here. Uh, this is just an idea generator, which is good for just coming up with random projects and stuff like that. Next, I went to Google Images, and I found this picture of a skateboard. And then um, I went to CG Textures, and I'm going to type in, let's see, how about some nice scraps? Scrap tiled. And I don't know which one of these looks best for a skateboard site, but I'm going to go this one. And only the first two are tiled in this set, but I like this one the best. And that's a plenty big enough file. So we're going to save the link, and we are going to go to wherever we put our thing. So here, web, uh, skate colony. And we're going to create a new folder called IMG, short for images, and type scrap.img. Sorry, what is it, the JPEG? JPEG. Okay. And save that. And I have to do the same for the one over here. Uh, if you go to Google's advanced uh, image search, it actually lets you uh, find things that are free to use and modify and all sorts of stuff like that. I don't know why this is giving me so much trouble, but I'm just going to hit Control S and save it like that. So we were in FB Web Skate Colony Image, and we're going to save this as Board Uncut because we're going to cut this image. And then we go into our terminal, which I already have in the folder, or you can use uh, your file browser for this as well. And it didn't save it with a file extension, so I'm just going to fix that. Ah, accidentally removed it instead of moved it. I have a feeling that's a somewhat common mistake, or at least I'd like to think so. Um, board uncut. Okay, and then we're just going to open it in GIMP or whatever your favorite editor is. Honestly, you could use uh, Paint for this if you wanted to, but I just like GIMP because it's what I'm familiar with and it's free. So I'm just going to kind of cut out this stuff here. Layer under that, I like feathered edges almost always just because I'm lazy, and it makes things look good without putting too much work into it. So we want to open up our layers with Control L and add an alpha channel, which you always have to do with JPEGs, otherwise you get nastiness. 
try to delete things and it just doesn't delete them. Okay, so uh, for the purposes of this video, that's good enough. And then we're just gonna go and uh, select the size of this. Okay, and then um, image crop to selection. So now we have our nice skateboard there, and then we're going to go file, save as, board.jpg. Oop, we don't want JPEG because JPEGs don't have transparency. So we could save this as a PNG or a GIF. Um, I prefer PNGs when there's more than a few colors. And just get rid of this stuff because all it does is take up more file space. You want to have small files when you're working with the web. Actually, since I believe we're going to have, um, our image is never going to be larger than 1140. Uh, it says, um, no, I'm going to leave it how it is. Save. Okay. So now we have two images, but we don't actually have our website at all. So we're going to start going with that. So in our uh, IDE or whatever editor you're using, you want to add a new file in the main part of your uh, thing, and we're going to call this index.html. And we're going to go into here and add a new folder. We're going to call it one folder CSS, one folder JavaScript or JS. I don't think we're going to be using any JavaScript, but it's just a good thing to get in the habit of putting a folder in for. Okay, then we're going to go to htmlshell.com and select some options here, and we're just building a basic website. This is how I do everything that I start from scratch. I'm not doing Internet Explorer stuff in this video because that would take about seven times longer. Um, we'll throw some meta tags in there, a fave icon. Linked style sheet. I don't think we need a jQuery for now, and everything else looks fine to me. So we can just take this and plop it in there. And right in our body, we're going to type hello world. Um, in our CSS folder, we're going to just create a new um, style.css. In our index.html, we have to change this reference here to CSS slash style CSS. Okay, so now we have a basic website set up. Um, so now we just have to attach this to something so we can see it. You could just open it like this. We could just go uh, in Google Chrome and pass it our index.html. And it'll run, although I usually prefer to have things running in uh, actual web server, so I'm just going to do that quickly. Uh, for that, I, ha I have Apache, and I recommend everyone have Apache on their computer, just if you do any web development at all. There, www. And we're going to go uh, clear this. I don't know what happened there. sudo ln minus s, and then find where our thing is. Web um, skate colony. And type in our password. There we go. And then now when I go to my browser, I can go to localhost slash skate colony. No. OK. And I don't know what it's doing here. Did I spell something wrong? Oh, that's not good. Uh, I must have messed something up with my Apache settings when I was working on a different site of mine, which you just got to see a sneak preview of. Um, so we're just going to be using it like this with the file URL, as ugly as it is. So we have the basic start of a website. And it wasn't too hard. We have Hello World displayed, but now we're going to make it more complicated because it's not a Hello World site, it's a skateboard site. So we're going to go and we're going to go find 1140 uh, CSS and it's cssgrid.net. Now this is just something that I like to put 
in pretty much every website I use. Um, it just makes things work really nice. And if you look at this website here, you see how it goes um, from like, I'm a big website to I'm a smaller website and I work with no problems on phones and stuff like that. So that's something that I really appreciate. Um, maybe I'll donate later, I don't know. Download. Probably not, I'm not really much of a donator when it comes to things like that. Um, so we go to CSS, 1140, uh, and then click Raw, and just select everything, then go CSS, new file, 1140.css. It's the only time I've ever named a file starting with a number. I usually don't do things like that because in programming, if you do uh, name variables with numbers, you get lots of problems. So this is all the the layout of our, our page, it, and then we're going to refer to uh, here, and just kind of look at this, and this is basically how our site's going to be set up. So you have rows, and each, in each row you have um, any number of columns. So like this looks like it's probably three columns, and then this is like the other uh, nine columns, is that right? Uh, I believe it's a 12 column, yeah, 12 column layout. So you can just put things in as many columns as you want. And then when the site gets smaller, no matter how many columns it is, it just puts everything into one column like this. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to start by making, um, let's see, do we need some sort of container? I always forget. Actually, I'm just going to kind of grab this, copy, and paste it in. Okay, so uh, we're going to have our container, and then we're going to have our row, which is going to have an ID of header. And you can kind of see here how you have your, your elements, and then you have attributes, like class equals row, ID equals header, and your attributes go in quotes. It's um, you know, just a, a common concept in markup languages. Um, and then we have another one inside of that. So this is the big one. This is the little one. Little ones go inside big ones. Um, and they're closed with the slashes. I'm not going to go too much into how HTML works in this video. I'm just kind of giving a general overview. Um, so we have our three columns. And then three columns, three columns, three columns. And on the last one, you have to label it last. So what we're going to do for this is we're going to have a header. And uh, we're just going to have... Uh, 12 column, and it's also the last. I'm going to make a typo at some point, and it's going to just not work. It happens quite often with things like this. Um, I believe, though, if I copy and paste this line, and you may have noticed how much I just love copying and pasting things, it just makes everything easier. You don't actually have to know how to do a lot of this stuff, because you see I just changed this, um, copy and paste this line, and then changed the file name, and now that CSS is in the page too. So, let's see, okay, there we go. Now it's telling me. Uh, it depends on your ID, whether or not it'll do that or not. So, we have our 12 column, and at the top here, we're going to put an H1, which is a, uh, the largest size of header, and H2 is a little bit smaller, and so on and so forth. And we're going to just write skate colony. Okay, then we're going to go and make another row, and in this row we're going to name it, we're going to have another row with an ID of nav, maybe. No, we're not going to do a nav bar in this. We're just going to have content, and content is going to have um, a three call. And we're going to get rid of this thing here. And then we're going to also have another thing to before it. And that's going to be the rest of a nine call, right? Nine plus three is 12, if my math is correct. In our three call, we're just going to put um, a little sidebar thing. And it's just going to have, uh, for now, an H3 element um, with the title side bar and then we're going to go p 
I'm going to go to a site uh, where I can get some lorem ipsum text. My favorite way to do this, and this is a cool trick, is you go to Google. That does not look like google.com to me. Ah, I spelled it wrong. Hate those phishing sites. Anyway, um, and then you type uh, ext equals txt, or colon txt, sorry. And then type lorem ipsum. And you notice this first second result here is just a plain text file with some lorem ipsum text and it's free to use for whatever as far as I know and we'll just plop that in our paragraph and in our main content we're going to put an h3 here and we're going to say main content and then we're going to put um, a paragraph and paste that in again. Okay, just so we can kind of see what the page is looking like. And then we're going to put second main content. I don't know. Okay, so we have a basic layout of our site. And we're going to later fill this in with some skateboarding relating, related lingo and all sorts of fun stuff like that. So we go to our page, refresh it, and you see it doesn't really look too great. So we're going to inspect this, make sure everything's being applied correctly. So we have a row that's the right size. We have our nine call. Ah, you know what we forgot? We forgot last. So if we just uh, take a look at this, what happens when we put last in should be that it goes to the right side. That's because things are set up so tightly in this uh, in 1140 that if you don't have that, it's too big and it gets pushed to the next line. So just looking at it already, we have a basic website. Um, it's a typo in the top part, but you see how the sidebar jumps to the bottom and then it goes back to the side like that. So that's what we want. Uh, we're just going to set the title here. Kate. I don't know what's wrong with that. It wasn't showing up right. We'll fix that later. And we want to put that in the title of the page up in the head section. And so now when we refresh our page, we're going to have Skate Colony up there. So now we're going to do some of our own styles. You see we have an empty style sheet here. We have uh, two IDs so far. We have an ID of header and an ID of content. So we're, and we're going to give this an ID sidebar and this. So we're going to put the ID of content on this thing here. Oop. ID equals content. Okay. So then if we go into our style, we have header, content, um, do we really not have anything else? Sidebar. And that's it. It's a very simple website. So in our header, we want to say we want a height of, let's say, oh, let's look at our image, whatever our image was. I'm just going to open our file browser in our folder there, because I can get all sorts of information about our images in it. I use Dolphin. It's my favorite by far, although I also have Natalia's and whatever XFCE uses just because I like to have everything in case for some reason I need one of them. I'm a bit of a hoarder with stuff like this. Anyway, we can go into our image folder and we can get rid of this board on cut since we don't really need that anymore. And then we take a look at our board.png and it has a height of 382, which is somewhat large, but we'll work with it. Height 382px for pixels. And it automatically goes all the way across. Um, let's see, what color does our, our picture look like? Because this might cause some problems if we try to put text over. Uh, I guess we'll just go with a, just regular black text. So for thoroughness, we're just going to put color black. That's color colon black semicolon. Um, that's how everything works in CSS if you're not familiar with it. I know I'm just kind of skimming 
over things here. Um, so then we have our content and our sidebar. And we also have one more thing we need to style, and that's just the body of the page. So we're going to come up here, body. And for our body is where we're going to start putting in a background image. So we type background image, URL, open parentheses, and then we start typing the path, image slash, let's see what our images are. We're putting scrap.jpg in there. Oh, sorry, uh, dot dot slash image slash scrap. I don't know why it's complaining, but it's because uh, CSS files, you have to go, uh, it's from wherever the file is. So if it's in the CSS folder, you have to say dot dot. So that goes to the directory above it and then down to image. And then, ah, that's why I spelled scrap wrong. Well, rather than fixing the file, I'm just going to leave it as scap. Um, yeah, it's some real code obfuscation there. So no one knows what's going on on my page. And you see now we have this complete madness. Uh, we're going to fix that in just a minute. Um, we need to give here, take this this row here, and give it an ID of main, because we need to set some styling on that. So we're going to go to main. Uh, I'm going to do a little bit different, actually. In content, what we're going to do is we're going to have background background dash color um, RGBA and we're just gonna have it be one 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 so that's full red full green full blue and point three alpha I'm just playing with things here I don't actually know what this is gonna look like and we're just gonna put it in sidebar as well And then we just go back and we take a look. And no, I don't like that. So I'm just going to play with it in Chrome. Take a look. Uh, this is by far my favorite tool for editing. My favorite IDE is um, WebStorm, but my favorite tool is just the Chrome editor. So what if we change this to 1? opacity. Okay. Sorry. These are supposed to be zeros. I don't use RGBA very often. I just thought it'd be an easy way to do this. Zero, zero, zero. One. Now I'm confused. So I'm going to do it the way I always do it. I'm going to set it to white and opacity. I don't know why I thought it would be a, a good idea to try something new in a video opacity 0 0.9 0 0.8 there we go and then I'm just going to copy and paste this and plug it in here because you don't actually have any individual stylings I'm just going to put a comma in this and then sidebar so now it applies to each of them okay um, can't even see where our header is on this page for some reason. Uh, color black, background, image, URL, dot dot, slash image, slash board.png. Okay. And see how that looks. And it looks pretty crappy, but we're going to go with this. Um, then we're going to go header h1 position relative top 40% left uh, call it 400 100 pixels color white 
And I don't know how this is going to look. I'm just kind of throwing out ideas here. pixels font size 89 pixels uh, just in case you're wondering like 80% of web development is just guessing things um, I don't know maybe there's a better way to do it but font shadow text shadow that's what it's called and I don't remember exactly how Tech Shadow works, so I'm going to look it up and show you one of the best sites to look things up on, MDN Text Shadow. This is the Mozilla Development Network, and it's just the best, uh, most comprehensive site. Although it specifically focuses towards Firefox, it also talks about other browsers as well. And um, it gives examples and stuff like that. So example, Text Shadow the color, and then there's two other parameters. So let me just see what those parameters are. Color, offset X, offset Y, and then blur radius. So I'm just going to say text shadow, black, two pixels, two pixels. And that's just going to be it. And see how this looks. OK. Um, we're going to do one more thing. We're going to get rid of part of our board. We're going to say on our header, margin top negative 100 pixels. OK, so now that pushes it up a little bit more. And then maybe we could put some navigation stuff over here just because we have a lot of extra space. And we have our main content here. We could add some padding to this to make uh, everything go in a little bit more from the side so it's not right up against this white border here. And we could add some images and we could put some actual stuff in our sidebar. But this is just a very basic website. And I don't know if you can tell or not, but it looks a lot like a lot of other websites out there, at least minus all the actual content and fun stuff like that. Um, so that's going to be the end of this video. Uh, it's just my process for starting a new website and how I get going with it. So thank you for watching and I will see you next time.